Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease Part 1. First, the definition. It lies in the three terms chronic, obstructive and pulmonary. Chronic is anything which is progressive with little or no reversibility in this case. Obstructive shows obstruction and pulmonary stands for airway disease. So it is a progressive obstructive airway disease with little or no reversibility. When it comes to lung volumes, the forced expiratory volume in the first second is less than 70% of that predicted for a patient based on age, sex and race or the ratio of FEV1 over the forced vital capacity is less than 0.7. In British guidelines, this 70% is replaced by 80%. The two types of COPD are chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Now coming to the pathophysiology of COPD. The epithelial cells lining the larger and smaller airways are irritated or inflamed and they produce excess mucus into the airways thus plugging the airways. The smaller airways or bronchioles constrict because of smooth muscle contraction and finally there is destruction of the alveolus. In picture number one we see a normal airway lumen and the elastin fibers which hold the alveolus open. In picture number two there is excess mucus secreted into the airways as seen in chronic bronchitis patients and in case of emphysema patients the elastin fibers are disrupted which are the alveolar attachments because of the enzymes, protease and elastase secreted by macrophages and neutrophils as a result of inflammation. This alveolus in an emphysema patient loses its elasticity. Clinical features of COPD. It's a late onset disease where the age of onset is either about 35 years for Indians and about 40 years in European standards. Smoking, either active or passive, is a major risk factor or exposure to irritants at workplace or due to pollution, low socioeconomic status and people with inherited alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiencies more prone to COPD. They present often with progressive breathlessness and productive cough. There is minimal diurnal or day-to-day -day FEV1 variation which is opposed to chronic asthma. Now after the general clinical features, let's see a broad classification into two groups, blue blotters and pink puffers for COPD patients. These groups are theoretically very different from each other but the clinical presentation may overlap a bit. First the blue blotters who have chronic bronchitis as their dominant feature. They appear obese with central cyanosis, chronic productive cough, purulent sputum or hemoptysis. Dyspnea is mild or not very evident. They may have peripheral edema or fluid retention in the body. On clinical examination, they have prolonged expiration, crackles and wheeze over the lung fields. And they are most likely to develop complications like secondary polycythemia to compensate for decreased oxygen in blood pulmonary hypertension or core pulmonary. Now coming to the second group, pink puffers are diagonally opposite in appearance. They are often thin, emaciated with barrel chest, pursed lip breathing, use of accessory muscles. Emphysema is their dominant feature. On clinical examination, there is hyperinflation and decreased breath sounds over the chest fields, increased respiratory rate. They are most likely to develop complications like pneumothorax, due to the bursting of air-filled alveolus or bullying. Okay, now before we go any further, let's get this clear, what actually happens within the body of a blue blotter. We saw that there is excess mucus secretion into the airways and also bronchoconstriction because of smooth muscle contraction. So there is an airway obstruction, patients present, present with productive cough as a result of mucus and dyspnea and wheeze because of airway obstruction. Inside the alveolus, so there is less oxygen and more carbon dioxide, resulting in alveolar hypoxia. As there is less oxygen in the alveolus, the pulmonary capillaries or the blood vessels around the alveolus also receives less oxygen, so resulting in ventilation perfusion mismatch. The body compensates by producing excess red blood cells or polycythemia. And because of increased carbon dioxide in the blood, there is respiratory acidosis. 
to compensate for this phenomenon the capillaries will constrict or pulmonary vasoconstriction thus increasing the pressure in the pulmonary vessels leading to pulmonary hypertension if we think this in regard to heart right ventricle pumps blood into the pulmonary circulation so if the pressure there is increased the right heart has to work more so on a long term basis it develops right heart failure or core pulmonary and a raised jvp is visible on the patient what happens in the left side left atrium receives blood from the pulmonary veins so there is less blood coming into the left side of the heart because of high pressure so the volume of blood pumped from left ventricle is also decreased thus decreased circulatory volume in the body so body has to compensate how it activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system to help with fluid retention therefore we see edema in these patients now let's take the same journey in an emphysema patient or a pink puffer we know that there is inflammation happening in the airways as a result of which macrophages and neutrophils produce enzymes like protease and other cytokines enzymes like protease and elastase later destroy the elastic fibers and the alveolar wall they also damage the pulmonary capillary wall resulting in decreased ventilation and perfusion from the alveolus to the blood and vice versa in addition to these there is air trapping because the elasticity of the alveolus is lost there is ventilation and perfusion deficit because of air trapping and the amount of air in the alveolus at the end of respiration results in increased end expiratory volume that is what we witness as barrel chest in these patients it is hyper resonant on percussion over the chest fields and breath sounds are quiet now the patient has to exert both to inhale enough and exhale out the carbon dioxide which is trapped in the alveolus requiring more energy and resulting in cachexia at a later stage these air filled alveoli can burst into the pleural cavity causing pneumothorax hope this is clear now okay so now we have a general idea as to what clinical signs we can see in these copd patients just we, it is important not to miss these signs on head to toe clinical examination let's go through it again and add a few more points from the face we can see pursed lip breathing central cyanosis and chronic bronchitis blue discoloration along around the lips prolonged expiration which is very typical of copd on to the neck we begin to see the use of accessory muscles and the cricko sternal distance is a bit reduced along the chest wall there is hyperinflated barrel chest which is very visible intercostal in drawing during inspiration the muscles are used and there is inward movement of the lower ribs on inspiration that is visible in emphysema patients because of the low flat diaphragm and when you begin palpating the cardiac apex is not palpable because of the air filled lungs or there is loss of cardiac dullness on percussion and when you begin to auscultate you can hear the hard sounds loudest in the epigastrium and over the lung fields there is often reduced breath sounds with or without wheeze crackles and other such added uh, breath sounds okay now we are done with the clinical examination of a copd patient and have to move on to investigations which can confirm this diagnosis so what do we see and what are the most common investigations on a general basis complete blood count shows an increased hemoglobin because of polycythemia or hematocrit value is increased we have to rule out infection always in these patients a chest x ray is quite common to take on the left side we see the copd patient and right side x ray shows a normal patient so as is very visible we see the hyperinflation the uh, lungs are hyperinflated radiologically if we count the anterior ribs seen above the diaphragm in the mid clavicular line it's often above 6 the flat hemi diaphragms are visible contra the normal x ray which has the curve maintained large central pulmonary arteries 
decreased peripheral vascular markings and the bullae are often visible. Okay, next is spirometry, which is one of the most diagnostic investigation for a COPD patient or any airway disease for that matter. The COPD patients need to be assessed with spirometry in a stable phase and not during acute exacerbation. It should be done under the supervision of a technician who can help the patient to do the test properly, exhale long enough, etc. And as the definition we learned, the forced expiratory volume or the amount of air the patient is able to expire in the first second is compared with respect to the forced vital capacity, which is the amount of air the patient can exhale during the full expiration. The ratio is often less than 0.7 and other values like the total lung capacity and residual volume is increased. We discussed about air trapping and DLCO, which is the gas transfer or the co-diffusing capacity is decreased in emphysema. It is important to note the shape of the curve or in a COPD patient as compared to the normal flow against volume curve. Now an additional investigation one can do in a COPD patient is take an ECG. As we know, long-standing pulmonary hypertension can affect the heart, both the right side and the left side or result in core pulmonale as we discussed. So the, there can be right atrial and ventricular hypertrophy in long-standing COPD patient, which gives an increased P wave or the size of the P wave is increased in the inferior leads 2-3 AVF. The QRS complexes can be of low voltage because of the hyperinflated lungs over the heart. And we can witness inverted T waves in V1, V2 and V3. Now, before we conclude, let's discuss arterial blood gas analysis, which is often done in casualties or emergency departments when patients present with acute exacerbations. It is a great leading step to determine what to do and what not to. We often see hypoxia, which is decreased oxygen in the blood of COPD patients with or without hypercapnia, which is increased carbon dioxide because of air trapping. Respiratory acidosis is quite common with or without metabolic compensation. In chronic cases, there is tendency to metabolic compensation. But it is very important to note that this is just general idea and the values may vary very much from patient to patient and situation from, to situation or because, because of the comorbidities these patients possess. Now that was the first part of COPD. We shall continue this discussion in part two with clinical classification, treatment of COPD and some clinical cases. Thanks for watching.